tell God all that is in your heart. As one unloads one's heart to a dear friend, people who have no secrets from each other never want for subjects of conversation. They do not weigh their words because there is nothing to be held back. Neither do they seek for something to say. They talk out of the abundance of their heart, without consideration, just what they think. Blessed are they who attain to such familiar, unreserved conversation with God. Today, today is all about friendship. Friendship with one another and friendship with God. Well, what do you say? Let's walk through these doors and let's worship God. A blessed good morning to you one and all and welcome to Drexel Hill United Methodist Church this sixth Sunday of Eastertide. Let's begin now our worship together by joining in our call to worship included in the bulletin. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Alleluia! As we continue our worship now, let's join together in our collect for the morning. Let us pray. God of mercy, we rejoice in the resurrection of your Son, the bread of life. 
Feed us with your plenty and increase in us compassion for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we move now to our service of confession, I say to you, we know ourselves to be a broken people, separated from ourselves, others, and the Lord of life. Let us then confess our brokenness together. Holy and gracious God, at times we feel so frail and fragile, getting blown about by the latest crisis, by bad news, by our own short tempers and failings. You call us to hold fast to what is good, but so often we flounder, unable to find that solid thing that will center us again. Help us, we pray. Help us to see you as our center and to cling to the good that you create in the world. Help us to set aside all our jealousies and prejudices, all our betrayals and lies, all that adds to the world's hurt. Help us to grow even more into Christ's likeness, that we will bear his love and truth to the world. We pray in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us, in one voice, receive our pardon, saying, Thanks be to God. And now, dear sisters and brothers, let us offer one another signs of peace. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us join now in the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me but I chose you, and I will appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another.
To begin, let's think about this 1927 quote from Albert Hubbard. Your friend is the one who knows all about you and still likes you. Hmm. We hear other things about friendship. A friend in need is a friend to avoid. He hasn't an enemy in the world, but all his friends hate him. I've lost friends, some by death. Other friends I've lost because I was too lazy to cross the street. Friend. Friend is a word that is freely used with very varying meanings. I was on the Massachusetts State Turnpike many years ago in my youth. I, I'm embarrassed to say I was driving a little bit mm, too enthusiastically perhaps and I, I caught the attention of a Massachusetts State Trooper. He pulled me over and we had a conversation about my driving, uh, at the end of which I allowed us how I was a little lost. I wanted to go to Marblehead, Massachusetts, and was this really the right road? And he looked at my license plate and looked at where I was and where I said that I wanted to go, and he said, well, my friend, you're a long way from home. Hmm. Friend? Really? Really? Years ago, I was dating Barbara, and we started to get a little more serious, and I, it was time for me to be introduced to her family. She arranged for me to meet with her sister, who had uh, my five-year-old nephew-to-be in tow, and you know, they were talking, and so I, I was entertaining the five-year-old. And it came time to close up, and uh, Barbara's sister said to this five-year-old boy, well, it's time to go. And he said, I, I don't want to go. I, I, I have to leave, but Russell's my best friend. Whew. We'd been together for... 25 minutes. Jerry was the best man at our wedding. He lives in Vermont now. We don't see him too much, but we try to stay in touch. When we do talk, we talk about adventures we've had when we were younger, covering each other, taking care of each other as we, for instance, made our way through Gare du Nord the most notoriously seedy train station in Paris, late at night, not knowing the language too well. All the rail workers and shopkeepers were gone. Drunks and drug addicts were all over the place. It was a place renowned for crime against tourists. But we had each other. We took care of each other. That was just one of our adventures. There were many more. Because for decades now, we've been friends. We've been covering for each other. We've been taking care of each other's concerns. And we've been confidants when big decisions have had to be made, when there was change in the air, when we were younger, which girls to date, when, which school to go to, now which job to take what investments to make. Friend. Friend is used in, well, all three of these ways and many more. The Massachusetts state cop, the five-year-old boy, and Jerry the best man. And what does it mean? What does it mean to be friends? On phrase on Facebook, uh, a left click, it's possible to unfriend someone. Unfriend is a lot easier than friend, I can tell you that much. Friendship often has no depth to it and signifies no more than we recognize somebody. But the greatest minds the centuries have been able to produce 
have been wanting to get to grips with what precisely true friendship is. Cicero and Aristotle here and there, Buddha, not seldom at all, they all plumb the depth of the meaning of friendship. Among the marks of a true friend, Buddha notes, one guards you when you are off your guard and does not forsake you in trouble and reveals to you the way of heaven. Hmm. But in the scripture passage this morning, brief though it is, Jesus Christ has given us, his disciples, an ideal of friendship. Real friendship between any two, he tells us, involves a certain drawing to each other, a kinship of spirit more radical than the difference there may be between them. Obvious and even startling though those surface differences might be. Well, that's essential, or else there can't be a friendship at all. But given that, in what does friendship itself consist? Now, characteristically, Christ puts first a willingness to spend oneself for the other. And this is not only ungrudgingly, without reckoning up the cost, but eagerly and so ready to help that a friend will give and give, even life itself, to aid and save a friend. Certainly the best definition of Christ's understanding of friendship is not a set of words we have recorded in the scriptures but a set of actions, the actions of Jesus Christ himself. His own lofty definition of what a friend is. Aristotle wrote centuries and centuries ago, we need friends when we are young to keep us from error, when we get old to tend upon us, and carry out those plans which we have not enough strength to execute ourselves, and in the prime of life to help us in noble deeds. And, says Christ, setting it down as proof of his friendship for us, all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Some scholars make much of this difference that Christ is not content with thinking things out in his own mind, but shared with his disciples what he found concerning God and human beings and life and salvation and a dozen other central matters. Life <laughs> is full of mysteries. But as it proceeds, surely a thing that richly deserves the label amazing is the record of Christ's trust in ordinary people. And this after we have repeatedly faltered and failed. There's a corrective for us when we get fed up with our sisters and brothers. Christ does not get fed up of our sisters and brothers, and thanks be to God, doesn't get fed up with us. You did not choose me, Jesus says to us, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. And he invites us to reproduce this spirit that we find in him, not only toward himself, but to all among whom we live. Well, there you have it, friends, Jesus 
Jesus' invitation to us, his friends, to share his love with all. God bless you in your discipleship. Amen. And now as we move to the sending forth, I say to you, to live is to risk and to care. We are ready to live for all humankind. Life is mission. We choose to be sent. And now as you have been gathered in from the world to hear the gospel proclaimed, I send you back now into that same world to tell of the living Christ and take this benediction with you. God the creator, God the redeemer, God the sustainer be with you now and remain with you evermore. Amen. Amen.